Adamus One is a development stage, lab-grown diamond maker that produces nearly flawless single crystal diamonds for gemstones and industrial applications. And with me is CEO Jay Gradina to talk about the company. Great to have you here. And Thank you for having me. Good me afternoon. About the, tell me about the company. What is it you do exactly? I'm still trying to figure out what I do yeah. myself. The, <laughs> we all are. <laughs> I'm the founder CEO, and I also say I'm the janitor as well. Yeah. Of Adamus. Okay. You're one. an entrepreneur then. <laughs> You're doing it I, all. I love doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we're, we're really excited. We just got listed on NASDAQ. December 10th was our listing date. Um, so it's been a, a crazy, you know, first month, to say the least. Um, and we're really excited. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we have our, our manufacturing facilities in Greenville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, we pride ourselves as owning all the patents for lab-grown diamonds, and we grow probably the best quality and the largest stones in the world. Okay, well, let's talk about the process of the IPO, and then we'll go in a little more depth about the business. So what was that like, like that path to being a public company? Very difficult. <laughs> you know, I always tell myself, every time I list a company on a public exchange, I said, this is my last deal, I'm never doing it again. And this one almost took the life out of me. Really? So you've it done was, others in the past? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so and, and I'd look at, you know, Adamus's. It has everything. It's got a great story with it. We have a great product. We have a great management team. Um, and it was just going through all the trials and tribulations in the process to get mm -hmm. to get listed with NASDAQ. And our goal the whole time was to list on NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite exchange. Oh, awesome. And it's like the pinnacle, especially since we're a technology company. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about how does technology play into lab-grown gems? Sure. So when we look at technology and how it actually is used within the lab-grown facility, so we basically create what we call a plasma or a star within a reactor. Everything's proprietary. Reactors are proprietary. The recipes are, are proprietary. We infuse that, that plasma field with carbon-rich gas. That carbon-rich gas actually rains down on what we call diamond seeds, which is about a seven millimeter by seven millimeter small sliver of a diamond. We have 50 of those on our grower plate. Within about a 30-day process, each one of those little seeds turns into about a six-carat rough diamond. Okay. It's like now, magic. <laughs> well, would you say that it's mostly gems or the industrial applications where you make your money? So currently we focus on the gem sector. Okay. It's kind of the low-hanging fruit for us. I got it. Our big game plan would be more for the industrial as well. Right now we look at our efforts as a 95-5 gemstone versus industrial. We like seeing that shift over the next 24 to 36 months to be more even and then start going shifting more towards the industrial. You know, our, our COO is a gentleman named Jerry McGuire. He was a C-level uh, executive at Analog. So I, I think when we start looking at the chip sector, you know, diamonds are the number one thermal conductor in the world. So when you start looking at it, and we know supercomputers are mm. right on the horizon. So when you start using diamond substrate and chips, that's when I think you're going to really see the magic happen. Interesting. I didn't know that, that diamonds were used in, in high-tech world. Okay, so um, explain to me the lab diamonds versus mined. Mm -hmm. um, is there a difference? Can people tell? What about the value? Does the fact that you can make a diamond drive its value down at all? Great questions. So we look <laughs> at, you know, the difference, really the true difference between a mined diamond and lab-grown diamond is one comes out of the earth, one comes out of a factory. That's about it. We're extremely eco-friendly, very small carbon footprint at Adamus One. Most of our energy sources, nuclear energy, um, our water's in a closed loop system. So we make sure that we're a true ESG company. And it's not just optically, we don't make sure that we put our best forth and best foot efforts out to make sure we maintain being a true ESG company. We're not destroying the earth, we're not putting large holes in the earth, destroying the ecosystem. And we don't have a social issue that everybody knows, blood diamonds. Mm -hmm. So as far as the physical of the diamond, were chemically, physically, and optically identical than the mine diamond, mm -hmm. which is amazing. There's no difference between them. It really is. Is there anything else but diamonds? Currently, we focus on diamonds. Okay. So we, our specialty is white diamonds and pink diamonds. Mm -hmm. We can do blue like your like your outfit. We okay. can do any color in the rainbow um, with consistency that you can't have within the mine diamond sector. There's a lot of advantages when it comes to lab-grown diamonds versus mine, um, but it, they're both categories. And they're, you know, I look at my diamonds are great. It's a mine diamond, but we look at where society is really going, sustainable earth, sustainable mankind. We want to make sure that we're supportive of that and we have a great product and we look at ourselves to be the number one brand within this category. And then talk about the year ahead. How do you plan to grow? What's your strategy? I mean, I'm really aggressive in business to say the least. I mean, you look at my history and pedigree, I say I'm, I'm pretty aggressive. So for me, I always look at how do we fulfill and complete our ecosystem where we're not subservient to whatever else's timeline is for everyone else. Or if like in, when COVID happened, everyone had supply chain issues. 
we want to make sure that we're in control of as much of the process as we can. So we look to make sure that we're going to acquire cotton polishers, post-processing, any type of thing that we need within that. And then we'll start going after verticals for distribution categories. We'll want to make sure that we're successful at every category, with whether it's we're selling wholesale rough diamonds, wholesale finished goods, or direct to consumer. I think our big focus will be a direct to consumer. Um, I'm a branding guy. I mean, I started out branding and, and creating brands and, and merchandising um, in e-commerce. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll see a real strong push with us in the e-commerce sector, influencer programs, celebrities, athletes, et cetera, yeah. as well. Okay, well, it sounds like you have an exciting year ahead, so. <laughs> A full year ahead. <laughs> a very busy one. That's, we wouldn't have it any other way. So thank you so much, Jay, for coming in. Thank you very uh -huh. much for having me.